In the alphabet soup of trash revealed during the financial crisis, we saw CDS, ABS, CDO, CDO squared, CDO cubed, and so on. There was no stopping these from taking over the financial system. Well, we all know what happened last time. This time, however, it's even larger. You came here for the truth. Today we are going to cover the financial derivatives. Let's begin. Flipping back the pages of history to 2009, we have this article out of Business Insider. They're actually quoting the Financial Times. The CDO is back, but it's different this time. We continuously hear that. That line reverberates throughout every boom and bust consistently fooling people well in 2009 they said there's nothing to worry about the cdos they're just fine cdos are back will they lead to another financial crisis this was 2013 and in this article it talks about what cdos are talks about the derivatives and it talks about the fact that there is nothing to worry about then in 2014 why do investors keep coming back? Well, the answer seems to be that CDO tranches and structured notes offer higher yields than products with identical ratings. Hold on to that for a moment. Like U.S. Treasury notes. The identical ratings they're talking about are triple A. Now, you have these CDOs, which are the worst of the worst debt possible, packaging up all the garbage together and having their friends at the rating agencies give it a triple a rating not that i think the u.s government should be a triple a rated but i believe that it is a hundred times better than a cdo the cdo is the worst piece of garbage possible and they were rated triple a so ultimately those investing look for higher yields what are they going to do they're going to get things like a cdo and should there be a problem you don't have to worry because the central banks will be there to bail you out that's what's happening right here 2014 they talked about the same issue and how there's nothing to worry about just trying to get more yield that's all this is just investing nothing to worry about now in my book, first book, I talked about the CDOs. I talked about the asset-backed securities. I talked about the credit default swaps and every other one of these derivatives. In fact, derivatives has a very large focus in my book. A CDO was generally a triple A product. It was rated as the same quality as the top first world country's debt. They were able to give it this rating because it was allegedly not true well diversified even though it contained nothing but subprime debt the joke is that they packaged up a bunch of garbage and blended it all together and called it a spectacular investment vehicle so if you look at this diagram right here i have several of these diagrams in my first book you take things like car loans mortgages credit card debt funnel all of that right here into a beautiful little package put a little bow on top of it called it a CDO and then you have your friends at the rating agencies give it a triple A rating and that is called a crime this is what derivatives essentially are this is what particularly the CDO is but this is a simple example, of course, it's just a little cartoonish type diagram to make my point very simple. And, you know, people try to overcomplicate it. And there's a lot of people out there who go into their mathematical calculations and they try to tell you that, you know, this or that or left or right or up or down. Look, this is what it is. I did it in a cartoon form to make a joke out of it because that's what it is. It's a joke. But a lot of people get hurt with this joke. That's the, the unfortunate part. So the CDOs, guess what? Today, they're making a comeback. This is 
um, new information, August 2017. The Wall Street Journal reports the synthetic CDO, the villain of the global financial crisis, is back. In the U.S., the CDO market sunk steadily in the years after the financial crisis, but has been fairly flat since 2014. In Europe, the total size of the market is now rising again, up 5.6% annually in the first quarter of the year, 144 in the last quarter of 2016. So think about this for a second. What is Europe struggling with more than even the U.S.? And that is getting their mark- markets going. How are they going to be able to initiate some increased yield? How are they going to get the inflation happening? How are they going to get asset prices to rise when all they're doing is buying up corporate garbage debt? Well, you need to get assets that have more return. And what do they do? They turn to something like the CDO and they are going to be burned, but have no fear because the ECB will be there to buy up any companies garbage debt so they can take on as much as they want they don't need to worry because the ecb the central bank will be there to buy up their garbage this is a disaster waiting to happen this is the financial crisis part two and we are sitting smack dab in the middle of it we are in the eye of the storm and we will see this become a reality very soon the only thing that i worry about is how long this takes to happen because the longer this builds for the worse it gets that is a fact that is an absolute fact it's already gone beyond the financial crisis and here we are today even at this state where it should have collapsed a long time ago the central banks have been keeping it up and let me say for the thousandth time the markets can continue to go higher and higher as long as the central banks engage in their same policies i've had enough of it i wish that we would have some sort of correction at least a 25 percent correction would give some semblance of reality to this but that's not how it works the central banks won't let it go down they're going to print and when real deflation sets in then the central banks will really give it then they'll really give it. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that very much. I do appreciate all of the support that everyone has given me, whether it is through something as simple as thumbs up, comments, subscriptions on the YouTube, joining me on things like Steemit, Vidme, whether you're donating to me through all the various means, I appreciate every single one of these. I always contact every single person. And when you donate to me, when you support me, I always tell you that I'm appreciative for that. If I haven't for some reason, then something happened. Maybe the emails haven't gone through or, or something because I always do because I appreciate every single person. Even more so now than ever because of what, you know, the situation that's happening that we're not allowed to talk about on here. So thank you. Thank you all. If you found this video informative, I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my new release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. If you're interested in taking a look at the CDOs, CDSs, all of these different derivative products, seeing the diagrams, the charts, that's more of what's in the first book. So you can check that out. Links are in the description below for that as well as the new book which gets into more of the becoming self-sufficient earning income as well as touching on the points from the first book so check those out and that's all for this video take care if you're still here just wanted to let you know after the whole issue that once again we're not allowed to talk about on here um Many people suggested that I do consultations again. So just to let you know, technically I, I've been doing them for quite a long time, but it was up until let's say maybe a year or two ago, I had started rejecting all of them. And the reason I did this was because I felt that 
I'm trying to bail out everybody with a thimble or, or bail out the world with a thimble, the ocean or the boat or whatever you want to call it. Basically, instead, I thought, look, you can email me and I'll answer your questions. Of course, I can't get into too much detail. I'll try to do my best through the email and then I'll try to consolidate everyone's questions into videos. And that's not really the same because when you're with a person one-on-one -on -one and you're doing a consultation, you can really answer their questions. They can respond back to you. You can give them personal suggestions. It's much better. I agree with that. But it just, I just felt that I could do more by doing videos. But because of what's happened recently and because... Let's just say that. Because of what's happened recently, I think that I'm going to open it up again. And I want to know your thoughts. I want to know if anyone's interested in it. I just want to know your thoughts. Even if you're not interested necessarily, if you think it's a good idea to do this, in addition, to, of course, to everything else that I do. So just pile it on, more stuff, uh, more, more work, more effort. And, uh, of course, I like that. I, I want to be able to provide a service that people want. So I want to know what you think. Like I said, not necessarily that you might be interested, but someone that you know or other people that you think would be interested. And just let me know, please. I appreciate your, your input. Thank you.